Hillary says, I keep my engine tucked in like one of the children. And it kind of is one of my children. I'm going to be filming over multiple days for this MD video because it's catch as catch can. I got a couple hours here, so I decided I'm going to put on the head today and I'll probably move on with the rocker arms and the valve cover on another day. Anyway, putting on the head is a pretty big job. I've already uh, cleaned up the head as far as I had to clean out the injector pre-cup holes and I got them such that the pre-cups just slide right in and out of them. And Bates did find pre-cups for me. They're used. Um, I think they're going to be coming sometime next week along with the ceiling washers. They did have new copper ceiling washers for them. So I feel comfortable putting in the head now. Here's the head gasket I'm going to put in. I checked the fit already and surprisingly this gasket can go on either way. You can flip it over and everything still lines up. Most of the time there's some irregularity on the on the deck here that means that the gasket will only line up one way but not so for this one in addition this gasket is not labeled which side goes up quite often they'll have a top label on them but this one doesn't and it's the same on either side as far as the fire rings go and all that so I can install it either way I always use this stuff as a gasket sealer and head gaskets it's Permatex copper spray gasket. I have had a hundred percent good luck with it. I, fingers crossed, I've never had a head gasket blow after reinstalling them. I put on three, four, five coats, light coats. I let it dry ten minutes or so in between. And I found this stuff is really good at sealing up little irregularities in the head or on the block deck. That's the way I do it. I know a lot of people debate the best way to put these on. Some people swear by putting them on dry or using aluminum spray paint, aluminum colored spray paint, or um, using a different gasket sealer, but this works for me, so this is what I do. Well, that's four coats. We'll let that tack up a little bit, and while it's tacking up, I'll clean off the block deck and the head surface. I use lacquer thinner to clean up these surfaces. Lacquer thinner is a good degreaser and it evaporates quickly, so it leaves things nice and grease free. The machinist said that he didn't plane the head, but this sure looks like it was plain to me and I appreciate that. I didn't get charged for it. I'm going to pick this head with the A-frame because it's pretty heavy. Too heavy for me to position by myself. Alrighty, we'll set this gasket on. Oh no, it's on backwards! Just kidding. I prefer to lightly oil these threads to ensure that the head nuts go on smoothly and torque properly. Although there is a difference between lube torque and dry torque, on this old engine, <laughs> torque ranges are usually given in about 30 foot-pounds range and a lot of the old timers didn't even have a torque wrench, so Oiling, not oiling, really doesn't make a big difference. I just like to know that they're all going on at the same kind of smoothness. After I cleaned up these head nuts, I took and I ran a nut down all the threads of the studs to make sure that the threads hadn't 
corroded up or anything that would bind up the nuts. And I had to dress a few of them with a die. Next I just turn them down to the point where they just make contact. I'll start torquing these down. I'm going to torque them in two steps. Um, I and T spec on these is 110 to 135 foot pounds, so I'll pick a number someplace in the middle or toward the higher end of that. I'm going to torque them to uh, 60 foot pounds to begin with, and of course, there's always a specific way to torque heads, and that is starting from the center and alternating sides as you go out. So here to here to here to here to here. You get the idea. Um, Later engines actually have a diagram in the uh, technical manuals. They'll tell you one, two, three, the order that they get tightened. But these old engines don't. So we just go by what is typical, just to do that. Uh, I went all the way through and torqued them all to the intermediate and now I'm going to torque them to, I think I picked 125 foot-pounds out of the 110 to 135 range. Now I'll just go through and check them all a final time and usually <laughs> Some of them will take more. And then I run over them a fourth time and make sure none of them move anymore when they hit torque. There, I'm done torquing down the head. Now standard operating procedure is always, always, after the first run and you get it warmed up, I always take the rocker arm assemblies back off and retorque all of the uh, head nuts after it's been run a little bit and usually they'll come down a little bit when I do that retorque. When you start to put parts back on the head these four holes right here just have these plugs in them just regular pipe thread plugs and they're actually into the supplementary chamber that the spark plug goes in that's opened up when the third valve drops down there's quite a large extra combustion space in here to reduce the compression ratio I'm just gonna put a little right stuff on here as a thread sealer these things get pretty hot and since they're in the combustion chamber I don't think they really need any thread sealer as long as they're in tight but just as a belt and suspenders I think what I'm going to do next is put on the rocker arms push rods this whole top assembly get the valve cover on so I can close up the top part of the engine and the first thing that go in are these little caps which cover the compression release valves in the head. We had a lot of studs to put in first. All different lengths. Had to look at the parts book to see where each size goes. These three rocker arm supports go in the middle three studs. And this standpipe is connected to the breather on the outside of the engine over here, which runs up to the intake side of the air cleaner. It ventilates the area under the valve cover. Now it's time to get out the rocker arm assembly that I cleaned up last winter, along with push rods little assembly lube where they seat into the tappet. And as I said when I clean these up, I do not keep track of which one goes in which tappet when I pull the engine apart because I adjust valve lash at the top here and so they're interchangeable. Opinions will differ on that. Before I put in the rock arms, I got to put in this little compression release lever here, which is the actuator that pushes the third valve up and down. And it's got this piece inside. So we gotta get this in.
go. Take this out for a second. Well, I got this in and here's some real life stuff that happens. There's a little star washer that locks the nut on inside. Well, when I was putting it on, it dropped down along the push rod and down into the lifter way down in here. And so I fished around. Luckily, I've got a borescope and I could see where the washer was, but I fished around with a magnet and with wire and I probably spent about an hour doing that and I couldn't get it out. I could see it, but I couldn't get it out. So I wound up having to take this cover back off, pull the lifter out, get the washer out of the lifter, put it all back together. So I think I'm done for the day. Well, it's another day and I've got a couple hours to work on the MD. I want to show you a gift that my dad gave me this morning. You remember this timing gear that drives the distributor and I had problems with a wallowed out keyway and I said well maybe we can machine something well what he did with the help of his machinist friend is machined a new keyway at 180 degrees on the gear and machined a new keyway on the shaft also 180 degrees from the original so that it doesn't change the timing orientation of the gear at all and it fits together nice and tight now I had quite a few comments in the last video that said well file the the key down, there's no way I'd do that. When you hand file something, you never get it exact. And any little movement in this gear is going to get amplified over time as it works against the key. That is not a cool solution in my book. I think it was even mentioned to tap the key in with a ball peen hammer. I, in my mind, this is the right way to do things. I'll, I'll never have to worry about this again. It's locked tight. It's not something that'll be nagging at me. You know, it's funny. Before I started this restoration on YouTube, I had no idea of what I was getting into, but I find that this work is taking me a lot longer because I'm constantly thinking, all right, some, what, what is somebody going to say in a comment section that I did wrong? Take the mechanics wire thing. Okay. I had somebody tell me that I should take the mechanics wire out of that oil pump and redo it with a pair of wire twisters. If you look in the old International Harvester Service Technician books, the safety wire in those old engines was always tied in that figure eight pattern. No fancy wire twisting and all that. It does just fine. As I said, every engine I've opened up has had that figure eight pattern. None of it's gone bad, none of it's broke. All the bolts have been secure and that's just the way I put it in. That's just the traditional way that these were put in. Next thing I'm going to do is prime and paint these areas on the engine on both sides that are covered by the injection pump and the distributor drive so that when I put them on I don't result in an area that can't be painted. I know it's just rail can paint but it'll work for these areas they're pretty hidden. And that's as far as I got today I have to wait for the paint to dry here what I thought I would do is I'm going to be working on this again tomorrow. I got another rainy day. I thought I would split this video in two and release it in two consecutive days because the next day's work is a, is a big deal. I'm going to install the injection pump, install the distributor drive on the other side so I have the timing gear train all finished up. Then I can put on the timing cover. Make sure everything's timed properly before I do it again. I'm going to do yet another check of the timing then put on the oil pan, then finish the rocker arms and the valve cover. I don't know if I can get it all done in a day, but that's what I would like to have in the next video. I would make a video that was 30 or 40 minutes long. I didn't want to go that long with one video, so I'm breaking it in half. So stay tuned and we'll continue work tomorrow.